my name is Cecily and I'm a PhD student at Roskilde University in Denmark and at University of Jyväskylä in Finland. I'm going to introduce you to patterns in biodiversity with an emphasis on diversity correlation in estuarine benthic communities in the Baltic Sea. So why the Baltic Sea? So the Baltic Sea is this large enclosed brackish water sea in Northern Europe. And it's characterized by having low species diversity and big differences in species composition from the outer parts to the inner parts of the sea. Furthermore, this is a quite young sea. It opened up to the high saline North Sea only 8,000 years ago after the latest ice age. And before that, it was a huge freshwater lake. So the species within the Baltic Sea have different invasion history. So some arrived earlier than others. And these species also are characterized by having different evolutionary histories. And on top of that, the Baltic Sea is quite interesting because it has this very steep salinity gradient going from full marine in the North Sea to almost fresh water in the bottom of the Botnik Bay. It also has a big climate gradient. It's very cold in the winter in the north and it's much warmer in the southern parts. And Additionally to this, it has a very interesting seafloor topology, topology, which has made this a difference in the interchanging of uh, the different water uh, basins in the Baltic Sea, and therefore uh, has a big influence on connectivity. So biodiversity, what is that? All of you probably have a quite good idea of biodiversity and what that is. But let's go through it because biodiversity covers the variety of diversity at all biological levels. So let's start from the top with ecosystem diversity. This covers the layout of a, the overall layout of a system, such as abiotic factors. Zooming in from that, we get habitat diversity, which covers the range of habitat types in an area. So for example, in the marine environment, we get a large range of different habitat types. Zooming in from that, we get community diversity, which covers the variety of biological communities in a system, as well as functional diversity, for example. Zooming in again, we get species diversity, which covers the number of species in a community or the distribution of species in a community. Zooming in again, we get populations, which covers the interspecific variation of phenotypes and, for example, behavioral patterns. Zooming in again from one populations, we get the genetic diversity. And this covers the allelic diversity or variation of genotypes within uh, the individuals of a certain population. If the trends on more than one of these biological levels follow the same pattern, we might find correlations. One of these correlations could be between the species diversity in a community and genetic diversity measured in a focal species. These correlations can be both positive and negative. A positive correlation could be if the genetic diversity of our focal species here a ragworm, rises along with the species richness in the community. And the opposite way around, if the genetic diversity of our focal species goes down as the community becomes more diverse. The drivers of these correlations can arise from both extrinsic and intrinsic factors, which can drive the correlations either negatively or positively. Or they can have a different result depending on the properties of the focal species 
and the community. Extrinsic factors or site factors can be area size, environmental factors, heterogeneity, and connectivity. And the intrinsic factors or community factors can be a dominant species in the community, either facilitating or competing against the rest of the community, or it can be the community that can affect the individual species via population size. Correlations can also happen between communities at different functional or taxonomic levels. These can be driven by, for example, environment, or they can be causal relationships between species at different levels, for example, host-parasite relations. To assess all these correlations, you need data. What I did was collect species diversity data using benthic macrofauna. Genetic diversity was measured in seven different species with different life history, invasion history, and within different functional groups. I measured microbial diversity in the sediments in these communities, and I measured an array of different environmental factors. This was collected on a spatial scale with seven stations distributed along the salinity gradient in the Baltic Sea and on a temporal scale at three stations, which were revisited four times over a full year to caption to capture the seasonal changes. Unfortunately, I don't have genetic data yet, but let me show you a bit of what is going on in the macrofauna communities in the Baltic Sea. So salinity shows to be the most significant driver of the biodiversity in the Baltic Sea, with all communities being significantly different from each other. And furthermore, we see that the most saline sites are dominated by marine species and the lower salinity sites are dominated by freshwater species and brackish water species. When looking at the seasonal patterns in macrofauna communities, we again see that the communities are significantly different from each other, but something weird is going on at our most saline site. Unfortunately, the first sampling year had an extreme warm summer, which is quite nice when you're field sampling, but not so nice when you're a small critter. So what we see is probably a recovery trend from a community wiped out by extreme heat and low oxygen levels towards a more normal looking community composition. However, when back to normal, we see a big change in species richness from our most saline site to the sites which have lower salinity and are further into the Baltic Sea. Lastly, I want to give you a sneak peek into my fresh out of the sequence of data of microbial communities in the Baltic Sea. It still needs some analysis, but as we did with our macrofauna data, we see changes in community composition from more marine species in our most saline sites towards more freshwater species at our low salinity sites. What can these correlations then be used for? They can be used to better understand the underlying mechanisms of ecological dynamics, to assess which intrinsic or extrinsic factors that drives communities on several levels in a multi-species community. They can be used to better understand which species represent the whole community at best, or which life history or functional groups are best at representing the whole community. And all in all, this can help to make better management plans 
the conservation of communities and the species within these communities. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you have some questions. And if you want to follow my research, you can find me on Twitter at Fiske Cecilie.